that Shiva was one of, is the greatest Vaishnava. There are a couple, couple little uh, points about that. Why, why is he the best Vaishnava? Lord Shiva is fully absorbed in Vishnu Bhakti. He is like Narada Muni because he is also a Bhakta avatar. He, Lord Shiva is an empowered incarnation of the Lord in the role of the Lord's devotee. That's why, he, because he's fully absorbed in Bhakti, that's why he's considered to be a Bhakta avatar. And he's written so many songs and given so many teachings on devotion also. And this, there's one magazine which is dedicated to Lord Shiva. And it actually, because we find, because as I said, a, a devotee is very merciful. <coughs> For example, if you come to me, I may be very wealthy, and you come to me and say, oh, he's very wealthy, I want some money. But I'm thinking in my mind, I know how to make money. And so many people come to me and they ask me for money. And so I give it to them. But I'm but in my heart of hearts I would really I would really like to tell them how to make money. Because they come to me and they ask for some money, but if they knew how to make money themselves, they would never have to come to me. And they would be independent and self reliant. And they can make so much more money because when they come they ask for a little bit. But they only ask for money. So in the same way, people work, go to Lord Shiva. Oh Lord Shiva Dhanam Dehi, Janam Dehi, Dhanam, give me money, Dehi, give me followers, give me position, give me post, make me mantri, make me this, that. And so Shiva says, all right, take it, take it, Bhavatu, Bhavatu, Tatastu, Tatastu, take it. But he's thinking, why don't they ask me? Why don't they ask me for what I can, for what I really have? In my heart of hearts, I want to give them Vishnu Bhakti. I want to give them devotion to the Lord. Because if they have devotion to the Lord, they'll get everything. What they really want is happiness and and eternal life and peace of mind and fulfillment, beauty, charm and sweetness. They'll get all of that if they attain Vishnu Bhakti. And I can give it to them. I have the power to give it to them. But they're so foolish. They come to me for these trivial temporary benefits. And it's... So this is why it's said in the Adi Varaha Purana, it says, Janmantara Sahasreshu Samaradya Brishadvajam Vaishnava Tvam Labed Diman Sarva Papak Shaye Sati. By worshipping Lord Shiva for many thousands of births, a person becomes wise and free from sins. Then he becomes a Vaishnava. Yeah. Because that's really, if you really get the mercy of Shiva, oh Shiva, Kripakuro, 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 give me your, do your, give me your mercy. If you really get the mercy of Shiva, you become a Vaishnava. Because he's a Vaishnava. In other words, if, why is he a Vaishnava? must be something good. Like there's a story, there's a story once of uh, one Shiva Bhakta. This Shiva Bhakti is worshipping Lord Shiva and says, Oh Lord Shiva, please give me a benediction. Please give me a benediction. Please give me something. So Lord Shiva appeared to him in a dream. He said, Go see Sanatana Goswami. He can give you something. Because Sanatan Goswami was always worshipping, he was a worshipper of Lord Shiva, you know, for bhakti. He would worship Chakaleshwar Mahadev and Manasi Ganga. And he worshipped Gopishwar Mahadev and Vrindavan. He worshipped Kameshwar Mahadev and Kamyavan and Vrindavan. So he was always having his bhajan kutir near Lord Shiva. Sanatan Goswami, one of the six Goswamis. So Shiva told this bhakta, he said, you want a benediction, then you go to Sanatan Goswami. So he went, oh, Sanatan Goswami, my... My Lord Shiva, he sent me to you. Oh, Lord Shiva sent you to me. He said, yes, you can give me some blessing or benediction. Please help me. So he said, okay, I have this one Sparshamani. Sparshamani means touchstone. This was something that was existing even 500 years ago. This touchstone was like like a stone. And if you touch it to something, if you touch it to iron, the iron would turn into gold. Sometimes it's called philosopher's stone or touchstone. So he says, oh yes, I give you this. You, Lord Shiva, I give you this. You take this philosopher's stone. You take this. He said, what can this do? You can touch anything, it'll turn to gold. He said, oh, thank you. So he, he took that home and he started touching. His wife had some iron skillet or something. She t- touched the, the, the iron skillet, you know, the tawa, like the, what do you say, tawa? Touched the loha tawa and it turned to gold. Oh, two kilos gold. Oh, okay. And he went and he sold that in the market and he got so much, uh, you know, saris and whatever, 
no things he got. <laughs> <laughs> new house, new car, whatever. So then he was enjoying his touchstone, and then one day he thought, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, actually, I forgot part of the story. But uh, when he went to Sanat and Goswami, he said, you can please give me a benediction. He said, yeah, over there, over there, under those leaves on, yeah. under there, there's some leaves piled up over there. There's one Sparshaman. You can take that and that'll create gold wherever you touch it. So that's the other thing. So they, then he was thinking, wait a minute. One day he thought, I asked for a benediction from Shiva. He sent me to Sanat and Goswami. He gave me this touchstone, Sparshamani. And I've been creating so much gold. But that saint who was living there in the Dwarasaditya Tila on that small hilltop in Vrindavan by Jamuna, he, really, he didn't give any regard to that sparsha money. He was just doing his bhajan and he was just, it was in a pile of leaves. And uh, maybe he has something better. Maybe he has some better thing than sparsha money because I'm getting so much gold, but he didn't have any concern. So he went back and he said, Oh, Maharaj. Sanatana Baba, listen, uh, can you tell me, can you tell me what, you gave me the sparsha money was lying in the pile of leaves, and uh, but you must have something secret thing, something much better than that. Can you please tell me what that is? And then he said, oh, I don't know if, if you really want that thing. I don't, I don't think it would do you much good, I, because it's something, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it for myself and I'm enjoy- relishing it and it's giving me tremendous pleasure, but I, I don't think it would suit you very well. No, no, really. Really, can you give me that benediction? I mean, Shiva, I prayed to him for a benediction. He sent me to you and now I think you have something better. Can you please give me that? It's all right. I'll give you this this thing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Ram, Hare Hare. He gave, I said, I'll give you this Mahamantra. You chant this Maha Mantra and you see what happens. <laughs> so this is also a Shiva story. That Shiva, this is when he's giving what he really wants to give, which is Krishna Bhakti. So he's Vaishnavana Yuta Shambhu. He's the greatest devotee. So that, that story is there. And, uh, and there's, I think I have one other entry about Shiva also being the greatest devotee. And then I think yeah, I let our other party go there. The, uh, <laughs> two F. <laughs> two F. Let's see. Two F. I, I, same thing I mentioned. That Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava. Why is he greatest Vaishnava? Because he spreads the teachings of pure devotional service. He founded, Lord Shiva is the founder of one of the four Vaishnava Sampradayas, which is known as Rudra Sampradaya. In the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, second part, chapter 3, verse 57, it says, Bhagavad Bhakti Vardhana, that Lord Shiva increases or promotes progress in devotional service to Vishnu. Vardhan, Vardhan means to increase. 